we're back on the dirt again. So we're on our way to Dunbar and then across to Chiligo. So it's 554 kilometers without fuel. So filled up the long range fuel tank and we've also got a 20 litre jerry can just in case because you never know what sort of fuel. Look at this little bugger. Go on, off you go. Thank you. <laughs> he just hopped out on the road and just sat there looking at the car. And I'm thinking, you're going to go? No. That's why these buggers get bloody run over all the time. Anyway, um, um, we just pulled over for lunch. Um, we had a bit of ice, not an early lunch really. Um, we're just cruising along the uh, Burke Development Road. It's, not, it's a good road. It was, yeah. Um, no complaints so far. But just how quickly things can turn from good to semi bad. It could have been worse. I got distracted by a fly that's been annoying the crap out of me for God knows how long. And he was on the seat, so I grabbed my hat. And I looked at him, flicked my hat down, squashed him, looked back at the road, and I was off heading for a couple of little shrubs. How quickly that happened, like it was a split second that my eyes were off the road. And yeah, things could have went bad. Like by the time I realised where we were and straightened up and then came back onto the road, um, I felt the trailer, uh, the boat, sliding out and yeah I don't know what happened to it but I just know it's still behind me at the moment and yeah it just wasn't stupid it was stupid but that just that one moment of lapse of concentration and everything could have turned bad yeah I'd, I'm annoyed with myself because of what I, what I did I shouldn't let it shouldn't have let it get to me but anyway we're back on the road again everything's all good um, yeah but it just concentration you need concentration on roads like even though the road's really good you still need to concentrate it was stupid At this little lagoon on the, what track is it? The Burke yeah. Development Road. That's it, the Burke Development Road. And you just um, saw this lagoon and we've been told there's you know, possibly. possibly some some nice little fishies in here. So uh, in, in yeah, along the... Barra. <laughs> in along the whole thing. So, um, so we're just having a bit of a break from the dust and see what we can what luck we can bring so stay tuned oh yeah
Now we tried here and just a little bit further up for about another half hour, but unfortunately, no fish for dinner tonight. <laughs> Welcome to Abbott's Outback Kitchen. Now that we've got a name, we're right. In here, pasta. Pasta and sauce. About a cup of water. Yep. Three quarters of a cup of milk. Yep. Uh, supposed to be a teaspoon, I think it is, of butter. We're putting garlic butter in it. Give it some garlic punch. All right. So that goes on the fire. We're going to cook on the fire tonight and show you what it's like to cook on a hot plate. So, um, yeah. Move the kettle over. This kettle's brewing for later. All right. So we've got today, we've got some uh, lamb chops. And some sausages. So we're going to have pasta, lamb chop, sausages, or well, Sean has the sausages, uh, eggs, and then afterwards we're going to have a cup of tea. So we'll come back because we've got to let that settle down first. We've got to uh, mix it in. It's going to take about five or ten minutes pouring stuff, and then we'll uh, chuck these on the barbecue and cook them up. Do it already, we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's boiling away nicely there. So we've just got that on the uh, on the grill part. Now it's time for some uh, steaks. Oh, this and that sizzle. Nothing better than cooking on a fire. 
Well, hot plate on it for it. Alright, some sausages. I can get them out. And some lamb chops. Oh yeah. Alright, so that won't take long. Everyone knows how to cook sausages and lamb chops. So, we'll then uh, put some eggs on and we're all done. As you can see, that's picking it up quite nicely. Snags are coming along bloody beautiful. Tops are just about done. Then we're just going to chuck on some eggs in a sec. <laughs> Lock the shell. Uh, very soft shells. So just fry them up. That's pretty simple. And then we've got uh, lamb chops, sausages, pasta and sauce, and eggs. All done. Alright, well that's it. So now we've got lamb chop. One sausage. No, no. No sausage? No sausage. Egg. Yep. Thank you. And a pasta. Might help if I put the spoon the right way. Yeah. And some pasta and sauce. Might help if I get a better spoon. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get Thank there. Thank you. That's enough. No more. And that's Thank it. You. There's dinner. Done. Beautiful. Alright. All right. Thank you. These are uh, uh, mystical fires. They're little satchels. And uh, yeah. I'm supposed to put two on, so we've got two. Here you go.
Well, here I am trying to uh, to achieve what Tim couldn't before, and guess what? I got the same result as Tim. Uh, no fish, unfortunately. bread well not yet it will be <laughs> we're gonna make some bread because we're um, a bit short on bread so we thought well, let's let's make some bread and we've got all day because we decided to pull up here on the Mitchell River in the background beautiful spot flicked a few lures around no luck but a bit of fun while we're doing it so yeah all good. Right, I'm going to start with, we need three and a half cups of uh, Lighthouse Baking um, Bread Flour. Three and a third cups. Look at that. Just enough. I've got that other one there, just in case. So that's for later. Um, sugar, two teaspoons of sugar. Now I haven't got an actual teaspoon, so tablespoon, sorry. So we're just using a tablespoon. Yeast, the most important part to help it rise. So one satchel of dried yeast. Come on, get out. Thank you. All right, and same again. Two tablespoons. It's actually teaspoons. Oops. Now, <laughs> a little bit extra, <laughs> doesn't matter. So just combine your ingredients. Make a well in the center. And add your water. So we need one and a third cups of lukewarm water. So I've just set this out in the sun, so it's lukewarm. Done. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm getting this right. <laughs> Where's the lightly beaten egg? Oh, that's for, uh, oh, don't need that yet. All right, so you just mix all that in. So that's your ingredients. Combine with a wooden spoon and use your hands to form a dough. A deer, a female deer. Oh, I need to lightly, lightly flour my surface. That's lightly floured in it. Looks good. So turn that out. And then you've got to knead it for eight to ten minutes, which will save you the boredom there, and we shall come back when it's kneaded. Knead it, get it. That's just about it. So it's a beautiful bow, dough, soft, it's elastic, got a, like elastic sort of feel to it. 
chuck it in there, keep it in a cool spot, put some glad wrap over it, and in 45 minutes to an hour, that will double in size. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, we'll see you back here in about 45 minutes to an hour. Cast your mind back 45 minutes to an hour ago. How small that was, now how big it is. So it's doubled in size. So you've got to just take it out. Lightly dust surface. Just give it a knead for about two to three minutes. Fast forward, well, yeah. Save you the boredom. Righto, so we've need that for two to three minutes. Now we're gonna split that in half because we haven't got, I'll just give it a quick knead. All right, because we haven't got um, bread tin, so we're gonna throw them in these aluminium foils. Righto. So you leave that aside for another 30 minutes. I'm going to grab the camp oven out and start preheating the camp oven. 220 degrees, so I'm going to guesstimate it with the camp oven. So they will double in size in the next half an hour, and then we throw them into the camp oven, and it's about 25 minutes to half an hour until golden brown. Before we do that, I've got to beat the, lightly beat the egg, so he's beaten. All right, see you back here in half an hour. That's that egg I beat earlier. It's time to smash it. Lightly beaten egg. I haven't got a broom or a brush, should I say. That's lightly beaten. So. This is the, uh, look at that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna uh, do this. Oops, come here, come here, come here, come here. Lightly dusty, it's not lightly, but anyway. It's about the best I can do. And to give it some decoration. There we go. Right, camp oven's been preheated. So we're now gonna go over. Chuck those two in there, chuck the him on top. All right. Throw a little bit extra coals on. I've already coaled the bottom, so I won't put too much down the bottom. All right, keep the fire going, because we're gonna need some more. Um, 25 to 30 minutes later and we'll see what happens. We'll come back. 
All right, just going to do a quick check. It's been about 25 minutes. Just make sure we're not burning the, burning it too much. Oh, I dare say they're done. I'll leave it a little bit longer. I'll give it that extra five minutes, but I'll clear some of the coals off and just just let it sit in there for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I reckon another five minutes and we should be done. So sweet. Right. I'm just admiring the Mitchell River. This is the Mitchell River at the crossing at drum duff um, in uh, Queensland and uh, it's just been beautiful sitting here cooking bread sit just admiring the the river like how pristine it is but well, I'm going to come back to that pristine bit in a sec because I'd have a gripe but we're going to concentrate on our um, bread so here we go There's our bread. Chuck it up on there. Get a tea towel. You can see the steam coming off it. Oh, that feels nice and fresh. It'd want to be fresh. It's just coming out of the oven. And there we go. We've got two beautiful little loaves of bread. One's just about to be annihilated. Um, there's nothing like fresh bread, butter, Vegemite. Bloody beautiful. So yeah, um, so you can do your own bread out in the bush in the camp oven. And uh, yeah, so we'll be right for a couple of days now. So we've got our breakfast sandwiches for lunch um, and yeah all good look at that that's that loaf of bread I've just cut open cooked to perfection so that plus that or that will go down exceptionally well you recording because this is going to get nasty this is a gripe that I had when I was talking about my bread back there have a look at this rubbish now there was a couple of bottles sticking out of the ground we have not dug any of this we've just sifted the sand off and that was sitting underneath this here we haven't actually got the shovel out there's more under there I can guarantee you that was all buried underneath here and if you walk this way well look at this i don't want to dig my hands in there because as you can see there's a broken bottle so we're going to get the shovel out later dig around lightly and try and find the rest of it because this is absolutely pathetic and to top it off come this way sean Good on them for putting it in a plastic bag, but dickheads, take your rubbish with you. You're ruining it for everyone else. So if, if you see this video and you know this is you, you're a moron, take it with you. Don't leave it here for other people to find. Possibly a kid to come running over and cut themselves open. You're in the middle of nowhere. You know, the closest hospital is 200 plus kilometers away. So clean your act up, the people that are doing this. That's what we dug out of the ground, there. That's the bag that was partly buried. It's a piss poor effort of doing it. And obviously, it was a piss up and a shoot off. 
and more on. Welcome to Chiligo everybody. This is our last port of call in the Gulf Country trip for 2019. Uh, after driving for so long, today we decide to spoil ourselves and we decide to stay here at the Chiligo Tourist Village uh, in, a, uh, in a unit. Absolutely wonderful place, beautiful rooms and nice and relaxing. Well, we're all settled into our unit, and uh, uh, it's actually the next day. Uh, we thought we'd just have a rest in the afternoon, and and uh, we'll start sightseeing the next day. So here we are, we're travelling around, uh, seeing the sights of Chiligo. Enjoy. This is the Chiligo Schmolta. What's left of it? We keep going up to the lookhouse and look out. Look house. <laughs> look out. Oh, well, there one right there. <laughs> right here. here it is here. Roast of chimneys. Chimney. She's a pretty big plant back in the day. 1905, wasn't it? That's when this was opened. Well, this was built as part of the 1906 19, uh, 1907 ex expansion. Oh, there you go.
slag heap. The slag heap is an accumulation of waste produced by the smelting process. Horse-drawn trolleys on the rail lines uh, carry slag and in bell-shaped pots to the heap. So that's it there. It's quite a massive amount all the way through there. I don't know if you can quite see, but that's pretty high up off the natural mm -hmm. ground site. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Between 1901 and 1945, the smelter treated 1.25 million tonnes of ore and poured more than a uh, a million tons of slag into onto the dump onto this here that's <laughs> incredible isn't it looking better so here i'm going to point here metal hills and that there is the walsh river valley and this up here is the uh, bukenbeda hills and then over in the background, you can see right through the background there, that is the Featherbed Range. It is very hot sitting here. Yeah. Uh, now it's time to go and see the Chiligo Caves. Um, I'm going to create a separate video for this because it is quite long because uh, we go really into the caves and we actually video it all so I'm going to put that in a separate video to, for you to enjoy For your safety this cave has steep slopes, large boulders and uneven loose, loose and slippery surfaces Let me show you where we've got to go Down in there Let's do it Oh, well, there you go. That was uh, Bohemian Cave. Bohemia. Bohemia Cave. And this one's the Pompeii Cave. Pompeii Cave. This is the next one we're going to go to. It's in there somewhere. So we'll follow that trail. We'll go to that cave and we'll have a look and uh, see if it's as bad as that one. That was, it actually wasn't too bad. Coming up, we thought it was going to be the challenge. It was actually easier. But yeah, it was easier. So. Yeah, going down I think is the problem because you've got a slide whereas coming up you can actually can get your footing and you can grip rocks to, to pull yourself up. So yes, you do have to have a bit of strength about you and that's what the milk industry has done for us. <laughs> we may not look like we're in top physical condition but we do have some strength. So, yeah, if I don't mind saying so myself. Okay. So over, <laughs> over here is the limestone outcrop and then, there's my finger, over there. <laughs> the mountains just over here is the metal hills. Where the dust is coming from. <laughs> uh, then in this area here is the feather bed uh, ranges. Then obviously you've got the, where's the smelter? The smelter, you can just make out the smelter there. So that's your smelter. Yeah, uh, where's my finger now? <laughs> oh, there it is. Hello. That's very <laughs> so, close. <laughs> you got the smelter, and then right beside it, um, right down in here, is Welsh River. Yeah, there you go. And obviously that's Her the township. Bed range would be that entire mountain in the background. You can see in the background. Mm. That's the like entire range. Yeah. Yeah. And there's our car down there. So. It's not, not, not too bad a walk. So this is the, what's this one? Treskin Caves. Caves. Now this is one of the ones that you've got to do in a guided tour. You can't explore yourself because I dare say, because there's delicate material down there and they want to try and preserve it. So, which is kind of good because we need to preserve these sort of things. And uh, yeah. Well, here we are about uh, 15 kilometers west of Chiligo and 
<clears throat> we've just come to the turn off to go right to the um, the archways uh, also down this road you've got the uh, the Mangana or the old Mangana cemetery as well as the Mangana rock art site uh, we'll just end up going to the um, the archways and we'll have a look around and yeah, see how we go, see how far in it is. We might be able to see that art side on the way out. But anyway, we'll go and see the archway, so we'll catch you there. Well, here we are. Lone. The lone wolves have just arrived by themselves. No one here. <laughs> We're going to park in the shade so the car's nice and cool when we get back. Yep. So the archways are about 160 metres in through there, so we'll just go and grab our bag, our water, and we'll go for a walk. Alright, we're out of the lovely comfort of our air-conditioned car. Archway is 160 metres. And here's the entrance. Looks like it's going to be a nice walk. Apparently this one's easy, according to the track the info and uh, already feels like someone's just turned the aircon on Mom. I dare say this just goes around to the walks around the outside I dare say I know, it comes out. So if we had to keep going, we would have come out there. So, so we'll go back that way. The longer we can stay in the cool, the better. <laughs> Might go this way first. This way looks interesting. That rock was a little slippery. Yeah. I'm not climbing that. <laughs> We've got to go all the way up there. Not. <laughs> no, this is just this is the end here. And just like little little offshoots. There's a little upshoot offshoot up into there. I don't want to go too far into it. Yeah. So that's where that little rock formation, rock cave sort of came, comes in through here. <laughs> it's incredible. So you can see the sheer size of it, eh? there's Sean in the picture there. Five foot seven. <laughs> and a little hole through there. Another little peak through there. And I climb back down the rocks. No. These ones are quite rough. I'm going to attempt to film me walking down the rock. You want me to film me from down here? <laughs> I've got myself pictured. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Till something goes wrong. Drop the phone and smash it. Put there. <laughs> and that concludes the walk of the archways. 
That was quite a nice walk. A look, a modern vehicle to take us back. <laughs> the beast. Right, Sean, while I got you, we got a. I want to show people our shirts that we had made up. Oh, okay. And uh, by Mates Rates Clothing Company. Uh, Mates Rates Clothing company.com.au I think I do believe they are if not we'll put a link down the bottom of, of them so we'll start from the right sleeve they've done a fantastic job of putting yeah, yeah. Stop. I've got to stop yeah. yeah of mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of in the shade but you can still see that uh, yeah TGM Caboolture Adventure 4x4 Auto Electrics uh, Bay Tire and Mechanical well, on the other sleeve we've got Concept Canopies Redcliffe Springs and Suspension Creative Conversions on the front had uh, our logo Habits for Drive Adventures Great Northern were kind enough to let us uh, put their logo on here and on the back Habits for Drive Adventures Facebook, Instagram and YouTube and that was the uh, one of the pictures from our trip last year so they've done a fantastic job on these shirts they're really cool they're lightweight um, yeah and the process was was really easy they made it really easy for us to um, be able to make uh, get these shirts made up so got long sleeve ones done. Mm. Fishing. yep so we've got short sleeve and long sleeve shirts done and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the problem is you've got to put sunscreen on as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. so no they've done a great job and we thank them very much so uh yeah cheers to uh mates rates clothing uh, this is the road to balancing rock it's only one kilometer in from the turn off so uh, Yep, that's what I thought. Uh, Roger! Roger. the balancing rock so now that's the walkway up there there's two ways to it so we took the left route and we're coming down the right route this time and uh, nice casual walk about 220 meters return just beautiful rock formations right through here
thumbs up. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for Abbott's four-wheel drive adventures for this year. Next year, we don't know. We'll keep you informed. Uh, keep an eye on our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Instagram. But we're at Chiligo. This is the uh, last stop on our golf trip. We started at uh, Cape Crawford. That was basically our starting point. We went to Limon National Park, Lorella Springs, um, King Ash Bay, Lawn Hill, uh, Burketown, Normington, Corumba, and then a few camp spots on our way to Chiligo. And we've spent the last day at Chiligo having a look at the uh, Tom Pryor Ford Museum, which is absolutely fantastic, well worth a look. And uh, yeah, so um, we've really had a good time. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down the bottom if you want to see more of uh, what we do. And, and yeah, but all had a good time. Absolutely, Absolutely. brilliant. Fantastic. Absolutely. 20 days of glorious, glorious oh. outback stuff. Glorious weather too. Mm. Like it's really turned it on for us. Apart from that windy section in um, Burketown where unfortunately we couldn't get the boat out. But we made up for it at Corumba. We had a great time at Corumba and yeah. So um, thank you everyone. Till next time, cheers and be safe out on the road. Catch ya. <laughs>